Welcome to the latest episode of Wheels Way. I'm here on Syndicate Lake at Gold Valley today and it's the perfect place for me to show you how I go about fishing shallow on the long pole. Today we're going to be targeting carp, not F1s and there's a big difference not only in the terminal tackle you use but how you set the rigs up. So it's something that we're going to look at. Yes there is a big head of F1s in here but they're big and they do feed pretty much the same as carp. An absolutely perfect day today. There's a slight easterly wind blowing in. There's an odd, odd fish moving. But what I want to show you today is the real importance of work rate when you're fishing shallow. It's one of those methods that you can't just let happen, say a little bit like method feeder fishing or something like that. You don't just do it and wait for it to happen. You have to do it, work hard at it, and make it happen. And quite often, when you look around these fisheries, whether you're pleasure fishing or in a match, the guy that's catching the most when fishing shallow is the one that's working the hardest. He's either feeding, turning his rig over, making noise of some description, or, like I say, hopefully, playing a fish. But he'll be working hard absolutely non-stop. We're gonna be fishing about 14 and a half meters today, loose feeding some pellets, I've got an array of shallow rigs set up today that I just want to show you because there's two or three little ones I use and just keep bearing in mind we're not talking about F1s. We're talking about catching some proper carp so like I say the rigs are slightly different to what a lot of you would probably use for your F1 fishing. So without further ado I'm going to show you the rigs that I've set up for today's session and the bait. Bait wise it's quite simple but like I say, it's more what you're doing with your gear and work rate. So let's have a look at those. So for today's session, I've set up four rigs. Two of them are the same. Again, that metre and a half of line, always measure it. And it's a massive, massive tip and something you definitely want to follow. When you go fishing shallow, it's important to get the rig the right length for yourself. And when you go fishing and you just think this rig is working right, I can turn it over. For me, if I hold it here by my armpit, the full extended arm, that is the perfect length for me to turn over. And everybody's slightly different, but it might be a good measurement just to go off. But when you get a rig that's working right, measure it so that you can duplicate that again at home. Like I've already said, we're fishing for carp today shallow. We might well catch some big F1s, but we're going to try and target carp. The rig itself with the terminal tackle is all basically the same. I've got O22 tournament rig line for the main line. Very important to have strength and durability. When you hook these big carp shallow, they're going to set off at speed and you don't want anything that's going to break. I've got a six inch hook length of O18. Um, again, the fluorocarbon from tournament. I've got a size 14. Guru Pellet Waggler Hook, which is a hook that I absolutely love for all my shallow fishing, whether it's Waggler or Pole. Yes, it's big. Yes, the line's thick, strong, durable, but remember all the time we're fishing for carp. The float itself is a 4x10 carper dibber. Again, the float doesn't have to be anything fancy. These are absolutely perfect for this. I don't want a bristle. I want something that's very positive. It's either there or it's not. Also here at Gold Valley, you are allowed to tap. Always check your rules as far as line length limit, if you can tap and various different things because do, you know, fisheries do change from venue to venue, but here you can. And you see some of the sort of variations in rigs I've set up. This one is for fishing, like I say, about that 14 inches deep. I've got a nice short line and I can just tap now and then whilst loose feeding. It, remember all the time, work rate. The person that works the hardest when fishing shallow, pole waggler, normally catches the most. So that's one rig that I've got. A nice little bulk of three number eight stots there. Just shotted the float perfect. There's no overshotting or anything like that going on. We're fishing for carp. I don't want to keep a tight line. I want to be flicking my rig around. Obviously with the length of line, that limits that a little bit. So on to the next rig. Exactly the same float. 4B10 Carper Dibber, one of my favourite floats. They're strong, durable, very visible when you're fishing at long lengths. That's absolutely perfect. I've got three number eights, but you'll notice there that they're strung out. And this rig, again, is that one. You can see that length. 
I can swing this at fish, I can turn it over and work really hard. And it's a rig that has got a lot of uses. Like I say, I can fish underneath my pole tip, I can just flick it out just past the fed area where you catch a lot of these big wary ones. Also, if I see a fish cruising to my left or right, I can also flick at that. Like I say, the main line, hook length and hook, all identical, nice and strong and durable. And like I've always said with, with fishing shallow, it's work rate and it's what you do and it's how often you feed, the regularity of feeding. The tackle itself, it just needs to be strong, durable and reliable. So the floats that you like with the line that you like, just stick with those as long as they're not letting you down and really concentrate a lot on, like I say, the work rate. You'll also notice while we're talking about it, I do use the cloud kits. And for me, they are, you know, so much of an advantage when fishing shallow. There's all these debates about, you know, do they work, don't they? In my mind, if I'm fishing in three foot or less of water in the edge, or fishing shallower than three foot when I'm fishing shallow, for me, they're a massive, massive plus. I've done a lot of experiments with these and for me, they definitely spook less fish. And if I'm gonna spook less fish, that means I'm gonna have more in my peg and ultimately have a chance of catching a lot of fish. I've got a couple of other rigs set up here and this is always a good little trick when you're fishing shallow for carp. Just have a rig that's just set up anyhow that you can just maneuver about. You know, you could start seeing them. It's a real humid day today and I might want to just swing a rig out six inches deep. And with these rigs, I can just bunch the shot up, move the float down, and I can virtually do whatever I want to do with this rig. It's very versatile. And one thing that I do a lot when I'm fishing shallow for carp is I'll be changing my depth. I'll be changing my approach. I'll be changing the way that I'm fishing for the fish because sometimes on these commercials, if you can catch eight or 10 fish, you're going to do really well. Likewise, I might want to start fishing at three foot deep. Sometimes when that sun comes out and it's really bright and hot, a lot of people can be forgiven for thinking all the fish are the ones that you can see. And sometimes when you're loose feeding very regular, especially with pellets, they can be just down a little bit, that two and a half, three foot. So always set yourself a rig up that you can have a little bit of a play around with that's quite versatile and you can just change and fish any depth or any how. Like I say, even though we're just fishing shallow, I've got four rigs set up, all with the cloud kits. And for me, they're the number one. Everything's strong, everything's nice and simple. And now I'm gonna go on to the bait for today's session. Obviously you've got things like casters, maggots, worms, slop, all of this, it can all work. For carp, however, and even lunch and meat, but for carp, however, 99% of the time, there's only one bait for the, when you're fishing shallow, and that's pellets. For today's session, I've bought some four mils, again here at Golden on a lot of commercials at the moment, feeding smaller pellets rather than those eight mils seems to be working really well. I think after a few months of them being fished for, they've wised up. So what I'm gonna do in today's session is feed predominantly fours with a few sixes and fish sixes on the hook. As you can see there, I've got some sixes. Again, I can change if I start getting problems with roach, rud, things like that, I've got some eights in my bucket there that I can just change to quite quickly. One little thing that I would never ever be without when I'm fishing shallow, especially as I touched on earlier, if I see a fish, I just want to flick my rig to it, is a little tub of red pellets. They are absolutely deadly. I don't know if it's the color. Um, it's, I don't think it's the smell. I, I think it's just the color and the fact that it's something slightly different. Back in the day when I used to fish a lot for roach shallow, you always wanted a darker caster the higher up in the water you were fishing. And I think these red pellets just really stand out in those surface layers. So when you're dobbing for fish, try these. And it's definitely my number one choice. If I can see some fish and I want to flick my rig at them, these are my number one choice. These are just a mixture of robin reds. Get yourself a small bait box, a little assortment. You can even share a pack out amongst your friends or, or your teammates. You don't need loads. I've had this since about two years ago and you're just picking odd ones out. But it's something I definitely wouldn't be without. So I've shown you the tackle, the rigs and the bait for today's session. Now the most important thing is for me to show you the technique and how I go about trying to get a few bites 
from these big carp. Well, here we are ready to start the session. I've seen an odd, odd fish about, but not as many as I would like. But what it's a case of now is just getting into the routine of flicking the rig over, making a bit of noise, and more importantly, getting the regularity of the feed going. Very, very important. What I'm also doing is picking a far bank marker. Luckily on this peg, we've got a nice life buoy opposite. And everything I'm gonna do with my feeding and turning my rig over is going to be to that life boy. And immediately, I'm just trying to make some noise, trying to get some indications, and more importantly, getting that regularity of feed. Some four mils, we'll be putting a few sixes in. Bite then, probably from a little fish. You see all the time it's work rate. I'm not sitting still. I'm trying to make some noise. I'm loose feeding some pellets. And just looking for any swirls, any signs of proper fish about. There was one further out in the lake then but well out of distance for the pole. I mentioned earlier that you can tap here, which is obviously using the pole tip to make some noise. But to begin with, I just want to fish, turning my rig over, and just see really what happens. Trying to loose feed around my float all the time, round it or just short, making a bit of noise, and at no point do I really want to think, right, okay, I'm just going to relax, not work as hard. Because I know those big fish, they come to noise, they come to that regularity of feeding. And that's exactly what I want to try and create. An area where there's bait going in regular, there's a bit of noise. And just be mindful on these carp venues, you don't need hundreds and hundreds of bites i think that's where a lot of people go wrong you know you go to an f1 venue and you do need to catch a lot of fish whereas when you're talking about carp or bigger f1s you don't need loads and loads of bites definitely a few small fish there at the moment but again it's only really early in the session prepared to work really hard for a handful of bites. And all the time, I'm just keeping my eyes open for any fish left and right that I can just flick that rig at. Any cruisers or, there you go, there's one. Perfect. There we go, there's another one. Again, just work rate, and we're keeping some fish coming. Not had many carp, only a couple, although one of them is well into double figures but these days it's not always about just catching carp they can be quite spooky hard to catch but by constantly working a rig we're catching some it's another big f1 we're catching some nice fish and we're getting an odd opportunity there's not many carp about seeing odd odd one bow waving around but the size of some of these f1s like I say, they're, they're almost like catching carp. You see that black hybrid elastic doing its job. Another nice F1. Really are good sized fish. See there, probably a good three and a half, four pound fish. And there's quite a few of them mixed in with carp. Well, as far as the session's concerned, we've not caught as many carp as I'd like, but we've had quite a few decent F1s. And just by keeping the work rate up, the feed regularity, turning the rig over, we've caught a couple of decent carp, we've caught some big F1s, 
a little bit of trouble with small fish but not loads and I just want to take the time to talk you through just a couple of things that are really important you see number one when I'm turning the rig over the float stays exactly where it lands and the pellet by doing that I'm not moving the pellet away from the noise that that fish has created uh, that that pellet and that turnover's created very important see one move there then very important that when you've turned that rig over you don't move it away from where you've created that noise because if a fish does come to where you've created that noise, you want your hook bait to be there. And it's just a mistake I see a lot of people make when they turn their rig over, they're moving it away. Vitally important it stays where you flick it over. Second thing is definitely accuracy of loose feed. If you're trying to loose feed on your float, oh bit of a bow wave there now I'm hoping that this wind getting up a bit of ripple on the water although it's really the wrong way will make an odd carp or a few more carp feed we've had a fantastic day don't get me wrong and it's it's one of those methods where you get like that sense of achievement you keep working keep working keep working feeding 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 and all of a sudden you get a bite today so far a big percentage of our bites have been from the the big f1s in this lake but again i'm not bothered because some of them are four pound a piece and i know we're putting together a decent match weight and like i said right from the word go fishing shallow is all about work rate you have to be working hard flicking that rig over feeding constantly looking left right for any cruising fish that you can see that are worth a just to flick your rig at quickly see i'm just trying to loose feed in a real tight area flicking my rig over sometimes once sometimes three times just to create a bit more, more noise but constantly feeding and constantly working and constantly looking round. And you see, you know, we're quite a way into the session now, but I'm still in line with my marker. I'm still in line, like I say, with the marker I chose right from the word go. And this is ultimately important, not just when you're fishing, but if it was a match and you were fishing in the edge, you were fishing a bomb, a waggler, whatever. It's very important that you feed accurately on that pole so that if you want to go back on it, you know that your feeding's been good and you know if there's some fish there, they're going to be right where you want them. So a far bank marker, as with all my fishing, is vitally important. And obviously picking something that isn't going to move, like an angler or a car, which I've done in the past, you look up and your marker's driven off. As far as the other rigs are concerned today, I did have a little bit of a go on the shallow, on the shorter rig, just tapping, uh, but just no bites. And it just seems, you know, the, the, the 10 or 12 fish that we've caught today have just been on this slightly longer rig. And just a bite almost out the blue but without that continuous work rate you don't get that handful of bites and as we all know on these commercials the fish are big and you don't need thousands of bites if you go on a proper f1 lake yeah you know where the f1s are a pound or, or slightly bigger yes you need loads of bites you need to catch a lot of fish but on these commercials don't get drawn into the trap that you're not catching enough. You know, 10, 12 fish can sometimes be enough for a hundred pound, which is a, a respectable weight and on its day can win. Always keeping my eye out for fish left, right. Obviously concentrating on what I'm doing, 
but I'm always keeping an eye out for anything that's within range for me to turn my rig over. Especially on these days where it's muggy, you know, the fish are obviously not really tuned into the bait. And if you can just see an odd one, just flick at it and, and give yourself a chance of that bite and every single fish counts and quite often the ones you'll see just cruising around on their own are them nice big ones, them game changers double figure fish that you don't need loads of there we go, there's one and you see then the work rate that I employed just to get that one bite feels like a decent fish, probably a big F1 or a small carp but just the work rate there, I probably had turned my rig over 50 or 60 times, fed 10 or 12 times, if not more. And the amount of work just to get that one bite, but it's vitally important because this is the kind of method, if you just sit there and almost let it happen, oh, that's a nice big F1. If you just sit there and let it happen, it's not going to, you have to make it happen. And whether you're targeting small carp, big carp, decent size F1s, work rate is the one thing that's gonna get you more bites. There's no magic baits, there's no magic floats. It's purely work rate. And I quite often refer a lot of the time to pellet waggler fishing. You know, those of you that have seen what I've done with a pellet waggler, you know, you're never sitting there just waiting, you're, you're casting, you're feeding, you're twitching, you're playing a fish, you're constantly doing something. Look at that. Lovely. Nice. And that, like I say, just goes to show the importance of working hard, never putting that catapult down, constantly constantly turning that rig over and yet we sort of came here hoping to target just carp or big big f1s and you can see there lovely fish probably three and a half pound and you catch a few of those mixed in with your carp they're worth their weight in gold there we go there's another fish on now not sure what it is it feels like a carp but again, I went back out after that big F1. No signs. Just started going through the motions again. Missed the bite, missed the bite, caught a little rud. Wasn't really sure. And then again, I revert back, refer back a lot to my pellet waggler fishing. And I keep saying to people, if you just keep going, it will happen. And I just kept turning the rig over, turning the rig over and bang, before I knew it, I flicked the rig over, the float went, and before I could react, the elastic was out. Not the biggest carp in Gold Valley, but again, you know, you don't need massive, massive weights all the time. There we go, nice. Beautiful. Got him in a bit quick, he's still going mad in the net. Perfect. Probably five, five and a half pound. Like I say, not the biggest one, but the next one might be the biggest one. And this is the, the sort of mindset you have to have in, this mat, in these sort of matches. It's not always about the size of the fish. It's just the fact that you keep putting odd ones in the net. quite interesting there really and again you have to be very careful that you don't read too much into it I was just thinking to myself doesn't see many carp up this end now and then bang we catch a carp and it just goes to show that sometimes as much as I want to keep my eyes and ears open looking around making sure that I don't miss a fish that I could maybe flick my rig at. 
you still need to just be going through those motions and just work hard, dedicate, oof, that was a bite. Really, you know, be strict with yourself because it's amazing sometimes you can just let that work rate fall. Especially when you're not getting many bites. Let that work rate fall a tiny amount and your bites are going to obviously dwindle. If it's a day like today, when there's not millions and millions of fish feeding, you've only got to let it drop slightly and those odd bites can become virtually non-existent. But if you're prepared like I am to keep feeding, keep flicking that rig over, have little swaps and changes, slightly longer line, slightly shorter line. Eight mil pellets, red pellets, just ring the changes, but all the time, no matter what, oof, all the time, no matter what you're doing, you must incorporate work rate. You can't just sit there and look at a motion. Yes, yes. You can't just sit there and look at a motionless float big F1 or a carp that thinks it's a big F1. One little tip as, as well I want to give you, you can see I've got my roller position normally where the 7 meets the 8 and that's a nice balancing point when I'm fishing at 14 and a half metres and it enables me to keep the feed going in. What I don't want to do is be playing the fish for 5 minutes and let that work rate and feed regularity full to a degree that if it's a match my neighbours are going to pull fish off me big F1 again probably three pound maybe closer to four pound and again the thing to realise is there's a lot of venues now with these bigger F1s in and it's not like fishing for the small ones. It's not like, you know, the, the, the sort of super glued pellets and rattling out two, three, four hundred fish. It's not like that. You know, here at Gold, you could catch, easily catch 10 F1s for 50 pound. And like I say, when they're mixed in with some decent carp like we've had, that 100 pound is well well achievable all i'm doing all the time as well is i'm checking my rig i'm just checking it for any damage i can replace my hook length and it's very important you can see there now i said to you i'm a massive fan of just playing around with my rig and today it was obvious early on that these fish were quite near the surface the water's quite clear i don't want to spook them with my float so all i've done is move the three number eight stots underneath the float so the baits can fall in completely free and it's very very important that you know you don't just say well this is the rig I want to use you're using the rig that's right for the day I've changed a couple of little things again Obviously, at one point, I was getting quite a few problems, missed bites from little rudd and roach feeding four meals, which has been good here lately. I've just changed to sixes, and I'm definitely getting less interference. And again, that's a that's a real good tip to have. You know, even though you're going down the pellet route, is to have a multitude of different sizes of pellets, so you can just ring the changes as far as. You know, if you're getting problems with small fish or you've got more of those bigger F1s or more carp or... Very important to just be armed with the bait so you can ring the changes. There we go. Lovely. Absolutely love any kind of fishing where I know it's down to me, it's down to work rate, and I know why I'm catching, it's through regularity of feed and it's through work rate.
yes there'd be areas where there's more fish you see again you can just stop on my seven and my eight keeping an eye on that pole feed to my marker and there regularity regularity all the time take every opportunity you can to feed and make it happen this is the beauty of pellet waggler and fishing shallow for these carp they're my two favorite ways because i know i can manufacture bites a lot of fishing you can't have a carp again nice firm grasp on the top kit feed into my marker a few ducks there now but they definitely don't scare the fish and on these days when like i say it's muggy i haven't stopped sweating since we got here and on these days when it's muggy and these fish are just on the back foot it's very very it, you know fishing shallow is definitely the way to put a weight together and you can't do that just letting it happen you have to let it happen one real good tip as well you notice then i did it and i like to just pick up on things that i sort of do without realizing and one thing I did then was, as I'm putting my sections together to go back out, I'm having a quick scan of my peg. I'm making sure that as I'm shipping out, there's not one that I can have a little flick at, left or right. If not, I can just carry on straight out to my marker and start the process of working that rig again. Feeding, turning my rig over. And it's always good when you're just putting your, your top kit on your pole, just to have that little look around and just check that there's not one within range that you can have a little go at and it's amazing sometimes because your pole's been in nothing's out there spooking the fish quite often one will come in range as you're playing a fish or as you're baiting up so it's always worth just having a little look a little scan of your peg you catch two or three like that it might be 20 or 30 pound those big wary carp. Not seen hardly any today. There we go. But again, through work rate, we're catching really well. Another fish bow waved off there then. So again, I'm coming in where my sevens meeting me eight, which is a good balance point of the pole. Can flick some pellets in and carry on in. And the beauty is when they're this size you can really really even if you know you're just getting odd bites so again i'm putting my sections together can't see anything so it's a case of just out to the desired length one thing i do do is every now and then i just check my pole sections because and there's a good reason for this when you're turning your rig over like this and your pole's constantly moving, constantly arcing, you can quite often just work a section loose. So it's always best, oof, every sort of tenth ship out, just take your time to just check them sections because you don't ideally want half your pole going across the surface of the lake. Again, all the time, I'm just referring back to my marker.
just trying to do everything to that. One other thing I want to talk to for me, and this is very important, is keeping fish in your swim when you're fishing shallow. And by that I mean not just in the upper layers of the water, but on the bottom. Quite often here, and we've had it a little bit today at times, when the fish are really there, you get a lot of fizzing on the bottom as well. And it's that regular, accurate feeding that will get them in your peg. Yeah, we're probably feeding too much to catch them on the bottom. But because they're in your peg on the bottom, they will come up as well. So it's just keeping them in your peg. And again, it's just another massive advantage of fishing to a marker, feeding accurate. And if them fish are on the bottom or half depth, you're gonna still catch them. They're gonna come up just because they're in your area. Very, very important. You don't wanna be firing pellets all over the place. Nice and accurately. Building up that swim. Fish on the bottom, fish half depth, and just targeting them shallow. Because if you can do that, you tend to catch decent fish. You don't you don't foul look so many of the carp it's quite aggressive fishing and what I like about it is it's quite it's quite selective in the fact that you catch decent fish you don't get pestered with skimmers or or so many small fish and I'm a massive fan of fishing for the fish that are going to win me the match yeah in team matches sometimes yes in team matches sometimes yes you know it's about not blowing out doing the best of the rest but in open matches where there's carp about I want to be fishing for the fish that are going to win me the match Well there we go, we finished fishing and it's been a real hectic day. Not so much in the numbers of fish we've caught, although we have ended up with a good weight, probably around about £100, but we've had to work extremely hard for some bites. But, as I said at the get-go, that is exactly what this style of fishing is about. You can't just sit there and hope that it happens, you make it happen. And at times today we've gone 25 minutes, 30 minutes without a bite, and then we caught, and at one stage I actually caught three carp in three chucks for about 25 pounds. Then it went really slow, caught an odd big F1, and just finished with quite a decent carp then. Work rate, just remember this, I know I repeat myself a lot, but the only reason I do this is because I know the importance of it, and I have reaped the benefits of working harder than other anglers on the lake in the past. So like I say, keeping that loose feed really, really regular. Being mindful to change like we have today, we went from four mils at the start, getting quite a few problems with roach and rud, even a decent hybrid. Changed to six mils, but kept the six mils on the hook and definitely improved catching some of those big F1s and some of those big carp as well. But having to work really, really hard for those bites. I showed you the rigs that I'd set up for today's session at the beginning, and I have sort of gone through them all. Tried the tapping rig, hooked one fish on that that actually came off, which I think was foul looked. I had a little scale on the hook, probably either a big F1 or a small carp. But that rig that's about three and a half foot long, just turning it over all the time. One little change that I did make was I felt today that the fish was spooking from the float. So I've fished about 14 inches deep, but put all the shot or the three stops, the three number eight stops right underneath the float and turn the rig over. That way I can use the weight of the float and also the float obviously to register the bite, but I get a nice natural fall on that six mil. And I've caught quite a few fish like that in these conditions. It's been hot today, it's been really muggy and you can tell the fish are on the back foot a little bit and this evening, they'll probably go absolutely nuts. But what we have managed to do on a real difficult day is put some fish together on the long pole, 14 and a half metres. I didn't go further because again, at times the bottom was fizzing where some pellets were getting to the bottom and I really felt 
that these were the same fish that were coming up and that I was catching shallow. But all in all, a fantastic day. Follow some of my guidelines and remember, I'm only gonna say it once more, keep that work rate up and you'll definitely catch a lot more fish shallow. Well, thanks for watching this episode of Will's Way. I've enjoyed every minute of it. It's been hard work and remember to subscribe to the Match Fishing YouTube channel. It's totally free and there's some fantastic information on there that will help you become a better match angler.